from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. MLB The Show has action out of the NL Central. It's the Chicago Cubs and the Milwaukee Brewers. John Shambi along with Chris Singleton. Singing today, of course, will be treated to the sausage race and some really good baseball. Yeah, these fans love their Brewers, and I love the way they run the show here in Milwaukee. I mean, the fans are into it. They bring it just about every home game, and there's a lot of fun tradition carried on in this ballpark, as you mentioned. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. Just about set. Pitching in our game today, Colin Ray. And Singy, it's unique these days, but he's more of a pitch-to-contact type of guy. Yeah, Boogie doesn't rely too heavily on the strikeout. He knows he needs to miss barrels, get some soft contact, let the defense do work behind him. And I think a guy like that can keep a good tempo, don't give hitters time to adjust or think. They can move through a ball game, and you look up, they're in line for a quality start. We'll see what he's got in this one. And yeah, a foul ball. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Kicks and fires. Fights it off. He'll see another. And the righty deals. And that's in the dirt. Left hand batter waits, stays alive. And a pitch. Got it by a quarter hitter. Good late cut for the strikeout there. That thing really got in on him. And, you know, the cutter isn't really a huge swing and miss pitch most of the time because it's not really meant to move a whole lot. You're just trying to miss the big part of the barrel and maybe get some weak contact. But that one right there did a whole lot more than that. That was a really good pick. Seiya Suzuki digs in now. It's been a tough stretch for him at the plate under the Mendoza line so far this month. Now a high fly ball out to left center. Sizes this one up. Pulls it down and he makes the catch. And there's two away. Here's a look at the Cubs lineup. One guy leading the way offensively for this club right now. Patrick Wisdom. Tops on the team in batting average, Boog. A guy who's showing off some excellent bat-to-ball ability when he digs in at the plate. You know, that's useful if your team needs to get an inning going, get a leadoff man on, but it's also incredible to have a guy like that in the lineup because he's a run producer who can drive in runs if you've got guys on base already. So he's a huge piece in this lineup. Cody Bellinger stands in here, leaves that one off the inside. Pitchers always face a dilemma trying to figure out how to attack this guy. He went with the breaking ball right there, but it feels like that approach might be playing with fire. He loves to go after pitches with a wrinkle in it. And a 1-1. Swing and a foul straight back. At the belt and fires. That one not close. Two and two. Two out spaces empty. That one ripped. Way back there. And out of here. It's his eighth home run of the year. And the Cubs have the lead now. It's one nothing. The one thing the pitcher didn't want to happen just happened. That's not an easy one to stomach. Knew what pitch he wanted to hit. Spent on some other pitches in this at bat. Was very patient and it paid off. And next is the designated hitter, Christopher Morell. Oh. 
Swings through that one for strike one. Ray, 33 years old, and he's one of the few players in Major League Baseball born in Iowa. Two down, base is empty, but one run across, and we're just getting started here in the top of the first. Swing and a ground ball out to short. The throw is low, and he can't pick it. Man at first, Nico Horner will hit next. Chris, baseball today, so many strikeouts, and they are available to pitchers. But this is a guy that puts the bat on the ball and is kind of different from the players that we see day in, day out. That one's in there, 0 and 1. Yeah, his swing is so good. It's in the zone a long time. He gets the barrel to it a lot, and that produces more base hits. Two outs. Singy, one of the things that's interesting is that guys really don't worry about swing and miss from an offensive standpoint anymore. So when you see somebody who contacts the ball like this, do you think of that as plus value? Absolutely. If he's doing damage now, if he's rolling over and, and grounding out, then it's a different story. But yeah, if he can put the ball in the gaps or over the fence, 100%. That one to first. It's in and out of his glove. But he wins the foot race to first. Good job of knowing how much time he had there. One scores in the inning coming on this solo home run. And the home team down a run. It's Major League Baseball on the show. Back here at American Family Field. And towing the slab here, Jamison Tyon. What should we keep an eye on here? Well, coming into this game, hitters are batting under 250 against this starting pitcher. So it just shows you how effective he's been. He's been able to move his pitches around, add and subtract, change up the look so that hitters don't get too comfortable and start squaring up the baseball. We'll see what he's got in this one. And that one fouled off. And now the one on the ground into the outfield base hit. Off to a good start with a leadoff now. Timing on the swing was good. Able to shoot the ball up the middle. Didn't square it up as much as he probably would have liked, but that's a good approach paying off. And now let's see if they force some action with good wheels on the bases. And now it's William Contreras. This is off the inside. Ball one. The pitch. And fouled off. Instead of letting the hitter get his arms extended, tied him up a little bit, slightly up, slightly in. Lined into right. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's one down. That is good. No left field. Let's take a look at the Brewers lineup. This is one of the best teams in the league when it comes to drawing walks, Chris. So we'll probably see a very patient approach from them. Yeah, Boogie, that's often uh, what leads to a lot of runs scored. You get guys on base, you work that pitch count up for the opposing pitchers. And then you take advantage when they make mistakes. You get into that bullpen. You can tell that everyone up and down. And now it's Christian Yelich. Oh. Throw. Save. Singy, he definitely showed off the wheels there. Yeah, and it turned out to be a bang-bang play. StatCast gives us the data, and that stolen base wasn't possible without that sprint speed. Man, it's second. On the corner for a strike.
Rudder goes again. Pitch in for a strike. And now a wide throw to third. I think he surprised everyone in the ballpark, and especially the pitcher. It wasn't a great lead there, but when he took off, I think he caught him off guard. Nice job to get to third. Popped up to the left, into foul ground. Yelich out of the play. And there's two down. Well, oh, that was a pitch you got to crush. Unbelievable that, cool. that he missed it right there. That's and I'm telling shot. you, he is going to be really? frustrating with himself until his next at bat. Willie Adamas stands in. And that one is lifted in the air. Bellinger sizing it up. He's got it. And that will end the inning. Brewers strand one. They're down one nothing. And we're back. Second inning set to go. And here's the first baseman, Michael Bush. And the pitch. Ground ball right side. Fair ball. Now, no waiting around right there. He was ready to swing it on the first pitch. Smash that one through the infield for the knock. When it's hit that hard, it makes it very tough on the infielders to make any sort of play. Dansby Swanson stands in. Good defender. He's been inconsistent offensively. That's First pitch misses. Bush gets his lead at first with nobody out. Edge of the zone for a strike. And the count even at one. Clyde Washington doing the umpiring behind the dish in this one. Sometimes considered a bit of a pitcher's umpire, Singy. He likes the low ball, which traditionally favors pitching. But, you know, hitters today are pretty good at dropping their barrel down. So we'll see how it goes in this one. Chris, do players ever change their approach in meaningful ways based on who's umpiring? Or is it good to just be aware of tendencies so you're not that surprised? I'd say the latter because pitchers got to pitch to his strengths regardless. The hitters got to hit to his strength. So you're aware of it, but you have to just hunt for what you can handle. Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot that the umpire is going to, at least for now, allow him to get that call. So hitters are going to have to make an adjustment, but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can. Now, Patrick Wisdom. No, First offering, and it just misses. Hit hard. That gets through. They get it in quickly. So first and second, now one out. There's nothing cheap about the way he got that one through the infield. That was ripped. Cut out in front and didn't get under it like he would have liked, but definitely put a good swing on it. So first and second with one man gone. And now it's Miguel Amaya. There's the strike. And that one ripped into right, and it goes just foul. 
Well, they say it's a game of inches, and that's a perfect example right there. Could have been a big swing in this game if it stayed fair. Squirts away a little bit. Play it third in there. And it's second and third, one away. Well, that could end up being pretty costly right there. They had the double play set up as a way to get out of the inning, but instead, it becomes a big strikeout situation with two in scoring position. The pitch. Throw comes in and holds the runner at third. They're at the corners now with still only one away. Well done. Drives in the run. Pretty tough for the infielders to do anything with that one. He pulled it hard into the outfield. And even when you keep it on the ground, it feels great when you hit a missile like that. Back to the leadoff spot in the Cubs lineup. And now Mike Tockman. He struck out swinging at his first at bat. Fastball for a strike. Two on, one out. In the air, right field. Freilich has a beat on it. Makes the grab. Runner tagging from third. He scores on the sack fly, and they're up by three. There you go. Nice little RBI there. It's a great at bat. Got the job done. Now the number two hitter, Seiya Suzuki, fly to left his first time. And that skips into dirt. Two runs across in the inning here at the top of the second. And Next offering is down low. Two balls, no strike. And the right hander deals. Foul ball. Two outs. And right back to the mound. Throws to first. And that will end the inning. They get two runs on three hits. No errors and one left. Now to the bottom of the second. It's the Cubs three and the Brewers nothing. Bottom half of inning number two. Now here's Jake Bowers. The first baseman, Jake. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. The one out. gets a check swing. Appeal to third. And Ed Drummond right on it says he held up. Here's a 1-1. That clips the corner. Kicks and deals. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. We're going to take a look at the pitch sequence of that at bat. And the thing to notice are the pitch locations. Every single one of them on the edges of the strike zone. And as a hitter, that can be pretty frustrating because you don't expect the pitcher to be able to make quality pitches one after another like that. And so those are tough spots to do damage in a great demonstration of pitch command. And it got him a punch out that time. Gary Sanchez at the plate. And a good fastball to start him off. That's strike one.
One down, base is empty. That's the third. And it finds its way through for a hit. Batting seven. The right fielder. And now here is Sal Fraley. Ball one, no strikes. The Brewers trailing by three, bottom half of inning number two. Right through there for a strike. And here it comes. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. You usually are going to see that inside fastball a little longer coming in from the opposite side, but that pitch really got in on him right there. I mean, that's a well-thrown pitch. Tough to do anything with that in terms of getting the hands through and the sweet spot of the bat to the baseball. Here's the rookie third baseman, Joseph Ortiz. Inside corner, and that's called a strike. Sanchez, the runner at first with two gone. Breaking ball inside. It's a ball and two strikes. In the air, center field. Bellinger drifts towards it, and that ends the inning. Milwaukee leaves one. They trail it here, three nothing. Back here in Milwaukee, top half of the third inning, and up to the plate comes Cody Bellinger. The pitch. Swing and a grounder foul, first base side. All right, Chris, when you talk about great logos, the Milwaukee Brewers, the M and the B that form a glove, not everyone even realizes that it's an M and a B with that glove. They started using it in 1978 and have been using it a lot more recently. It's a great logo, Chris. Yeah, Boog, I remember as a kid, my brother had that ball cap, and I would just kind of borrow it. Some would say steal it, but it was just such a cool-looking logo. I had no idea until years later that that's what was hidden on the inside of it, that M and that B, but very, very cool. And foul ball. If you're playing right now, tweet out, I was this many days old when I found out the Brewers glove logo is an M and a B. Hashtag MLB the show. Because I guarantee you there are people playing right now that had no idea there was an M and a B in that logo. <laughs> That's a great point. Thought it was a pretty good pitch. Top of the strike zone. We're seeing more fastballs in that location. Hitters, especially with two strikes, have to be ready to pull the trigger. Swing and a pop-up foul out of play off to the right side. That'll find the stands. Righty to the plate. Outside low. One and one. I think it's one of the best all time. An art student at UW Eau Claire created it. It is super creative, and I think one of the better logos we have in the sport. And that one in the air center field. Perkins on the move. And there's two away. The batter number two. Second base. Nico. Here's Horner. Nico Horner. 0 for 1. He grounded out in his first at bat. Oh. 
Out to short. Throw off line. He's safe. And a nice job there to keep it from getting away. That's a play you expect your shortstop to make pretty much every time. Pretty routine. Hard to tell if he didn't get a great grip on it or the mechanics on him just broke down, but that gives this offense an extra out to work with. Runner at first with two away. And up next for Chicago, Michael Bush. One for one with a single and a run scored so far. Gets the call. That's strike one. Righty delivers. Swing and a miss. 0-2 oh, now. No Two outs. Oh. And that's outside. One and ball. it's one and two. And a pitch. And it finds its way through for a hit. Corner around second, heads for third. And that'll put runners at the corners with two away. That's back to back singles for him. I know that was a ground ball, but it was absolutely hammered through the infield. That's not one you're excited to get in front of if you're an infielder. You know they used to say, charge it. Crazy. Dansby Swanson is going to get a chance to hit. There's a strike. Runners on first and third, two away. We're here in the top half of inning number three. Next offering in there for a strike. That's strike two. Right-hander kicks, deals. That just misses, and the count is one and two. It's a good take. The shortstop takes the ball. Runners on first and third, two away. Here comes a pinch. Foul ball, another 2 2 upcoming. Two on, two outs. Struck him out looking. Two left on. We move on to the bottom of inning number three. It's the Cubs three and the Brewers nothing. And welcome back to the ballpark. Leading off, Blake Perkins. We talk about guys with good speed, and definitely he has it. But pushing the offense aside for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. The wind of the pitch. Well, he gets to balls that get by most people at that position. Just really impressive because there are certain times the ball comes off the bat, automatically that team that hit it thinks that they've got a base hit or they may have extra bases, and he just takes it away. In time to Bush. Leadoff man retired here in the third. This is Bryce Terang. One for one. He let off the bottom of the first with a single. First pitch, and he just misses. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. 
One down, base is empty. That one finds the corner, and it's two and one now. This one popped up. Foul ground, first base side. Amaya snags it for the second out. Now back, the designated hitter, William. So now here's the DH, William Contreras. 0 for 1 so far. Fastball for a strike. Not sure if he was expecting for the pitcher to come right at him, but he got a nice cookie there and just watched it the entire way. Two down, nobody on. And that one pulled foul. The pitch. Swing and a miss, and he got him. And Milwaukee is set down in order. Nobody left for Milwaukee. Still down 3 0. Back here at American Family Field. Out of the fourth, here's the third baseman, Patrick Wisdom. Patrick. With this kind of lead, he can swing freely, try to hit the ball out of the park, do what he loves to do. Ray, back to work. And downstairs. You know, these Cubs showing great discipline at the plate, and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. It's not just the three runs they've already scored. On top of that, they forced this starter to throw more pitches than he wanted to at this point of the game. The pitch and it's fouled away and that pitch count is impactful because if they can keep making him work hard out there it may force the bullpen to get involved a little sooner rather than later and the righty deals the punch out there and one gone in the fourth as they get the leadoff man well big power guy right there and generating so much bat speed it's hard to bring that to a halt once you've committed a try to check the swing just couldn't do it. Miguel Amaya, the next cup to hit. This one in the air right field. Freilich has a beat on it. He's got it. And a couple of quick outs. Up next for the Cubs, the left fielder. Here's Mike Tockman. He's old for one. That one ran inside, almost got him. Left hand hitter waits. Swing and a miss. Man, he was really tardy on that fastball. Great job of setting him up by throwing the curveball. Add some velocity to it on the next pitch. Can't catch up. Two outs. So a foul ball makes it one and two. And another ball. Two balls. Two, straight. two down, nobody on. Top half of inning number four. Drilled out towards left center field. That's well struck. And that should be extra bases. Around first, heading for two. And that's a double. Well, patience and discipline paid off right there as he got into an advantage count. Loud contact leads to the double. I mean, you could tell it had extra bases written all over it as it jumped off of his stick. Man in scored position with two away. Seiya Suzuki, the next cup to hit. And the first pitch misses for ball one.
And he deals. That misses the zone. Ball two. Activity in the bullpen. Trevor McGill, the hard throwing righty, is up and loosening. Wilson getting loose as well. Tuckman at second with two down. The 2 0 is in for a strike. Two ball, one strike. And a swing and a miss there. That missed inside. And that's ball three. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with three-hole hitter coming up if he's walked. Man on second, two down. Bows it back with two strikes. Swing and a pop off in foul ground. Ortiz drifts towards it. Hauls it in to end the inning. One left for the Cubs, but they're on top by a count of three to nothing. Bottom of the inning. Now it's Christian Yelich. No left the Brewers either. in striking distance, but have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the leadoff, man. I need a good at bat out of him right here. The wind of the pitch. That's in there. That's strike one. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. Usually doesn't work out for success, nope. but Out's you can never predict baseball. Left hand batter waits. In the dirt, two and one. Headed down the line. And it's off the wall, but foul. The line to kick the pitch. This to third, wisdom. Leadoff hitter retired in the fourth. Now back. Not short stop. Really? Up now for Milwaukee, Willie Adamas. 0 for 1 with a fly out to center. And that's a base hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Well, that started and ended pretty quickly. No messing around right there. Recognized the break on that pitch early, and that allowed him to keep his front shoulder in. You know, it's easy to bail on those front door breaking balls, but a great job right there of letting it travel, then unloading a nice balanced swing. And now it's going to be Jake Bowers. Man at first, one away. Out towards right center field. Bellinger drifts towards it. Nabs it. The catcher, number 99. Gary Sanchez. And here comes the power hitting catcher, Gary Sanchez. And he's already singled in this game. And the there's a ball. Oh. And that's in there at the knees. Next that's pitch is ball. downstairs. Two balls, one straight. Kicks and deals. Puts it in the air out towards left center. Tuckman makes the grab and that'll end the inning. Brewer strand one. They trail in this one three nothing.
And we're back. Ready now for the fifth inning. Here comes Cody Bellinger. Cody Bellinger. Ray back to work. That one's in there. One one. I think he was sitting off speed right there because he just let the fastball go by. And that's off the inside edge. One ball, one strike. At the belt and fires. This one chopped to first, and he takes it himself for the out. The batter, number five, designated hitter, Christopher Morrell. Christopher Morrell, the next Cub to hit. You talk about the power and the speed together. Well, we knew he was going to be a stud just coming up, making his way through the minor leagues, and quickly at this level, an impact player. Fastball for a strike. And a pitch. That one pushed foul. Base is empty, one away. And we're at the top of the fifth. And now one and two. Well, that's kind of what you expect in an 0 2 count. Excellent job of the hitter to have the plate discipline to lay off of that pitch. And they'll do it again. Really great change of speeds. He goes off the off speed to the fastball, and the hitter doesn't know what's coming next. One down, base is empty. Got him looking. That's a strikeout. Got a little bit of a questionable call on that fastball right there. It appeared to miss off the outside just a little bit, according to the electronic strike zone. But that's the type of location where you kind of have to understand that it's close enough to where you don't want to put the fate of your bat in the hands of the umpire. He did, and he got burned. Now, here is Nico Horner. Ball one there. Two down, nobody on. And that drops in for a strike. Ground ball, left oh. side. And that's just foul. And a pitch. Curve, hit right back to him. Tosses to first, and the Cubs go one, two, three. Nothing happening there for the Cubs, but they lead it three nothing. Back here in Milwaukee, John Chavi with my buddy Chris Singleton, and set to get us started. Bottom five, Sal Fraley. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. And that one fouled off. Well, these Brewers just aren't putting great swings on the baseball in this one. They're trying to find ways to drive the ball with some authority, but it's just not happening for them so far. Zero extra base hits in the game, so it's been tough for them to get anything going. And there's one away. A couple of pitches and a quick out. Sometimes you have to keep chipping away until you break through, but it's a lot easier to put runs on the board when you have runners in scoring position because they put themselves there. Joseph Ortiz getting ready to hit. His splits between April and May there. The Cubs trying to close out a three-run lead. Last half of inning number five. 
popped in the air left field two up two down. Center fielder number 16 Blake, Blake Perkins up now Blake for the Brewers. Perkins swinging it much better this season in away games than here at home. First one offering ball. misses okay. badly for ball one. Swing and a miss as he was late. One and one. Two outs. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Looking sharp just to strike away from five shutout innings. This could end it. Oh. And another ball. Next offering is downstairs. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Swing and a miss, and he chases that one in the dirt. And that'll do it as they complete the strikeout to end it. This is just a nice win. Three-nothing ball game. You feel comfortable about the three runs that you score, but you also know that if you're not careful, a bloop, a base hit, and a home run ties everything up. But it was great pitching. Timely hitting really made the difference. A shutout in this one. Three-nothing, our final score. The Cubs go home a winner for Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show. I'm John Chambi saying so long.